be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. I'm going to ask that Sister Brandon Robinson will prepare for the scripture. Amen. Of her choosing. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. As we come back into a new conference year, let us bow our heads in a word of prayer. Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help than I know. If I would draw thyself from me, oh, whither shall I go? Oh, merciful and wise, kind, liberating God. We have come this morning gathering your name to worship you in spirit and in truth. God, we have come by highways and byways looking good into your house. But we didn't come for no form or fashion, but we came to lift your name up on our Because God, we are thankful because you woke us up this morning. And you start us on a brand new day. You put food on our tables, clothes on our backs, a shelter over our heads, a reasonable portion of health and strength. So to God, before we ask you for anything, we want to pause and say thank you for everything. Because we know you didn't have to do it, but we're so glad that you did it. You didn't have to wake us up this morning, put food on our table, allow us, the Lord, to part the soil and pick up our clothes. God, we thank you for what you have done in our lives. Oh, God, we have come on this last Sunday in the month of September. And as we reflect upon this month, God, we can say, God, you've been mighty good to us. Yes, we had some ups and we had some downs. We have been leveled to the ground. But God, we came to morning just to forget about what had happened this month. But God, we came to magnify your name. Because God, we look beyond our faults. And you see every one of our needs. And so, Spirit of the living God, fall fresh in this house. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on St. James Church. Spirit of the living God, fall on every woman in this place. Spirit of the living God, fall on every man in this place. Spirit of the living God, move from pew to pew, from heart to heart, and from mind to mind. Spirit of the living God, stir this atmosphere with your power, divine spirit of the living God. Move like you never moved before. Bless like you never blessed before. Spirit of the living God. Tabernacle with us. Just for a little while. Oh God, we have just come out of a Another annual conference. And God personally, I want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God, for the godly judgment of the bishop and you to allow me just to come to some wonderful people called St. James AME Church. Thank you, God, for allowing me to enter into my seventh year as pastor of this church. And God, I believe that you're not done with me yet. That we still got work to be done. We still got souls to be saved. We still got missions to be accomplished. We still got to roll up our sleeve and tell a dying world that the wages of sin is death and the gift of God is eternal life. God, you still gave me an opportunity to give me strength with my tired self, to stand behind this sacred desk with all your quickening power to give me strength and give me a word to share with your people. God, I thank you. Oh God, 
Lord, I'm so glad you did. And so, God, in this moment, I rely on the scripture that declares in Philippians, all things will pass away, and behold, all things will become new. Thank you, God, for a fresh start. Thank you, thank you, God, for a new beginning. Thank you, God, for what our eyes have not seen. Nor our ears have not heard. And so God have thine own way in this worship experience of the day. And God, I promise, I promise God that you will get the glory out of our situations. You'll get the glory out of our lives, God, because if it had not been for you who are on our side, we wouldn't be here today. But since we're here, we're going to lift you up. Since we're here, we're going to magnify your name. Since we're here, we're going to glorify your name. Since we're here, we're going to stand to the glory of God. Since we're here, we're going to clap our hands. Since we're here, we're going to wave our hands. Since we're here, we're going to leap for joy. And since we're here, we might as well dance to the glory of God. So great is thy faithfulness. Oh, Lord, thy Father. Do it again, God. And we give your name praise. Honor and glory. This we ask in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And the people of God that love God shall shout amen. 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 And amen. Come on, put your hands together and give God praise in the house. Amen, sister Randy. Amen. Come on, continue to put your hands together. Come on, put your hands together. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just look at somebody and say, neighbor, this is a good start right here. This is a good start right here. Amen. Praise God.
Good morning, Reverend Dr. Kelly. Good morning, St. James Avenue Church. Good morning. Those in person and those virtual. Good morning to you. We just completed the 144th session of the annual conference, uh, which was held at Pine Grove AME Church here in Columbia, South Carolina. Uh, I was uh, selected as your delegate. Sister Jeanette Haskell <coughs> was selected as your alternate. And we were there all day, every day. <laughs> From um, Wednesday until uh, yesterday late. So we're all tired. I already know that one of the culminating uh, things that we do at the annual conference and that happens on the last day. That is on um, Saturday, the last day. On Saturday is the pastoral appointments. The pastoral appointments are given on the last day. And I will read to you the pastoral appointment of our pastor, Reverend Dr. Dante Wynn Kennedy. And Dr. Kennedy, please stand. Under the appointment of Almighty God, certificate of pastor's appointment, study to show thyself a workman approved unto God. African Methodist Episcopal Church, this is to certify that Reverend Dante W. Kinley is appointed to the pastoral charge of St. James, Columbia. The, church, the said church being under the jurisdiction of the Columbia, South Carolina Annual Conference of the African Methodist Episcopal Church, given under my hand and the denominational seal at the Episcopal Room this 24th day of September in the year of our Lord, 2022, signed on behalf of the Annual Conference, Samuel L. Green, Sr., presiding bishop. So will you please stand and welcome our pastor back with a loud call. Let me know. Uh, they, I have a, a, a sheet that has 
just Thursday's report, or what happened uh, Thursday and Friday, and that's about 15 pages long. Okay. So I am not going to go into all of that to tell you uh, uh, what happened. Of course, you know there were many, many sermons uh, at the annual conference, and uh, you could have watched those. You could have watched all of the sermons that were on at the annual conference because they were on the Seventh Episcopal District um, on website. So you could have watched all of those. Uh, but we had some very, very interesting uh, business sessions uh, during the annual conference. Uh, they talked about um, the annuity uh, situation. They talked about um, the, you know, we have, we have purchased uh, some, uh, a building now, a convention center, a white oak, we have purchased that. And they discussed what's happening with white oak. Um, there's some renovation going on on the campus of Allen University. When Allen University came, they come on, um, I think it was Friday for their um, report and the president of Allen University I gave his report and there was some singing going on from the person from the choir. So, and there's a rally during that, that um, service where each district collects money for Allen University. And I think at that, uh, I don't have the figures in front of me, but I think it was something on our, in, in the field, a uh, range of $80,000 plus dollars that was collected just from the Columbia Conference for Allen University. So there are six conferences, and each conference uh, collects money for Allen University. So we, just in Columbia, that's Newberry, that's um, Newberry District, Columbia District, and Lancaster District, uh, collected eighty thousand dollars. So all the rest of them collected whatever, and some collected more than us. So you can imagine how much money we got for Allen University doing this time. Um, uh, and, and Allen University, as we know, needed every penny of it. So uh, we were glad to 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 do that. And also, um, uh, uh, Brother Richburg, our member here at St. James Church, also uh, came up, and uh, he is now. We just set, accepted him again, and the bishop did it, um, gave him remarks, and, and, and gave him uh, what the bishop expects. And as we know, and I'm not telling you a, a secret of something, you know, um, he has been there before. And the bishop talked with him about what his expectations are, and what will happen if he doesn't fulfill those uh, expectations. So, see, he will be here at St. James AME Church under the, uh, under the direction of our pastor, Reverend Dr. Dante Kelly. And I think it's, he's going into the second year, am I correct, Reverend Dennis? He's going into the second year. So uh, let's pray with him and pray for him that he is successful in his journey toward his uh, ministry uh, uh, this time. And uh, we have some choir members. This, Joanne Grant, Alto, Jeanette, Haskell, and Sister Cheryl Martin, and we sang to the glory of God. Amen. If you listen to some of these services that we had, we did some real singing. We did some singing. Amen. And uh, we were glad to do it. We were glad to do it. We were tired. But we, we, you know, we know, you know we enjoy what we do. <laughs> we enjoy what we do. But you know, I, I'm not telling you a lot of the business because it's just so, it's really so much. And, you know, they have different committees, committees on social action, committees on prison ministry, committees on everything, everything you can possibly think of. But like I said, I will have you a full report if you want to read all of that. And it's very interesting. It is very interesting that you, um, because as a member of the AME Church, you need to really know what's going on in your church. You know, and, and, and you know, you pay money sometimes, you know, I always say, but what is all this money going for? You know, you know, one of the things that, that, that Bishop Green uh, started to do is the, the benevolent that, that, that he takes up goes to smaller churches who need help. That happens a lot. That happens quite a bit. And every year, some church in every district receives money from the bishop. Uh, churches that the presiding elders uh, tell the bishop needs some help in some kind of way. 
So, but, but it specifically says that the money is not to, to pay some of your conference claim. So that money is to help the church, help the churches itself, not to pay the conference claim. So, um, in the benevolent offer, uh, offerings all the time, uh, we know that money is going for uh, a good use. I, again, thank you so much for uh, electing me as your delegate for um, this 145th session of the annual conference. And I always go to serve you proud at St. James Avery Church to do the very best I can for you in every way. So I just thank you again for what you have done. And uh, what we're going to do this year is support about Pastor Reverend Kennedy. You know, he, he, he's, when they were talking about what pastors should do and, and, and what they shouldn't do with these kinds of things, this man does it all. You know, we're just so proud to, to, to stick our chest out to say that what they were saying that are positive things for a church to grow, Reverend Kennedy does. Reverend Kennedy does that. So we just look forward to working with him for the 2022-23 year. So thank you all again for selecting me as your delegate. And uh, I praise God for you. I praise God for St. James Amy Church. And we're on the move, move and we'll continue. Thank you so much. Thank you. This is Lauren Brown. I'm about to praise her name. Now, Sister Brown, just so that these people can sleep at night, tell them there's no tea on that appointment. <laughs>
what we do. And I know I call on you all all the time because we are collecting for the, the local area, the local, the area, the conference, our Episcopal, even the connection. We are collecting and I don't like to use that word big, but we are. And you all are always telling me whatever I need, you need. Just let me know. So I just thank you all for all that you do because I didn't do it by myself. And number one, we thank God Amen. for enabling us to be able to. Amen. So I thank you and I love you and um, everything is good. Amen. Amen. That's all the announcements that I have for you on this day. And Sister Brad reiterate, we are tired. And um, Reverend Asbel can attest to that, but she's retired now. <laughs> Praise the <laughs> Lord. <laughs> so uh, we ask, brothers and sisters, that you will pray in the pew for me as I stand and share God's word on today um, and give God the glory. We will be sharing. Uh, some upcoming announcements pertaining to our rededication service. Um, I do have those dates, and I will share with you once I get a little break, a rest for this week. Amen. So we'll share those rededication dates with you, and to share with you the activities for the remaining of this 22 year. Amen. Come on, put your hands together for yourself. This given time in the house of God, the Lord said, you give unto him, he'll give back unto you good measure, press down, shaking together. Run it over that you may not have room enough to receive, for God said it is worthy to can open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing upon you that you may not have room enough to receive. You can't beat God's giving, no matter how hard you try. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we have four ways that you can be a blessing in the life of the church. You go to our website by typing www.stjamescola.com. There's a button there that you can give through our online giving. The second method is if you have an Android or an Apple device, go to your stores, download the app called Givelify, then search for St. James Gaming Church Columbia, and you'll be able to give through our Givelify apparatus. Amen. The next step, my brothers and sisters, for those of you who are watching virtually, you may mail your gifts to the P.O. Box 5594, Columbia, South Carolina, 29250. Amen. And for those of you who are in the sanctuary, you may deposit your giving, entering and exiting this wonderful worship experience on this day. Amen. Yeah. Our brothers and sisters, if you're prepared to give by envelope or electronic, I ask that you lift it up as a point of contact. And if you don't have anything, just lift up your hands and repeat these words. Say, God, God I thank you I that I have it I to give. give. Thank, you thank you for allowing me allowing to be a blessing to St. James, James Church. Now God, now God multiply, multiply, sanctify, sanctify use, it use it for your glory, for glory and for your honor. For your this I ask this in I Jesus' name. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. Amen. At this time, Singing by the wonderful and dynamic praise team of St. James Avery Church. And the next voice you will hear will be from God. Amen. 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 Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. Amen.
in spite of my brothers and sisters what God intended us to do, God still get the glory out of our lives. And my brothers and sisters, matter of fact, you are a witness and a testimony. If you just look around this particular sanctuary, you can truly and honestly say that if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, we would not be in this edifice today. All because my brothers and sisters, we did it in love. Amen. My brothers and sisters, when you are in love with God, it is important that we love each other. And yes, my brothers and sisters, there may be come a time where we have to disagree to disagree. But all my brothers and sisters, can I be a testament that we all had to do it in the name of love. Because for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Our brothers and sisters, when we approach this particular uh, word, love, my brothers and sisters, I want you to know that it is not as challenging as some people think it is. My brothers and sisters, if you're saved and you're sanctified and you're filled with God, precious Holy Ghost, you must, my brothers and sisters, and let me reiterate, you must show love. And I know, my brothers and sisters, we're living in a time and a world, my brothers and sisters, where uh, people are not displaying love. We, we got people who talk about you and scandalize your name and call you everything but a child of God. But in spite of the text message, in spite of the email, in spite of the gossip, my brothers and sisters, we have to learn to come together as the body of Christ, as the kingdom of God, and do everything in love. Do I have a witness here? My brothers and sisters, can I let you know that you can accomplish a whole lot of stuff if we just do everything in love. I promise you, my brothers and sisters, God can explode within the house of God and do what the scriptures say, move from heart to heart and from mind to mind and from spirit to spirit. If you just come in with love, God can just, just see the miracles and the manifestation upon your life, my brothers and sisters. If we just come into God's house, just trusting in the love that we have for one another. My brothers and sisters, can I tell you when you just love your brothers and your sisters, can I tell you God can shift an atmosphere, God can begin to move on your behalf if you just what? Love one another. My brothers and sisters, I want you to know that the scripture is right. When you enter into God's gates with thanksgiving and enter into God's porch with praise and be thankful unto God and bless God's holy name, you're not doing it for your own sake, but you do it because you love God and you love God's people. My brothers and sisters, I want you to know when you begin to love people and when you have a love for what you have been called to do and that you have been assigned for such a time as this, I want you to know that something on the inside will begin to work on the outside of you, my brothers and sisters, and you can say if it had not been for love, who was on my side, I would not even be an usher, I would not be a steward, I would not be a trustee, I would not be on the choir, I wouldn't even be a clue member if it wasn't for love. Is there anybody in here just know?
knows what I'm talking about? That you know that love woke you up this morning? Love gave you the strength. Love gave you the power. The love gave you the understanding. And love gave you the wisdom to come into God's house. Gather and constant to worship you in spirit and in truth. I want you to know, my brothers and sisters, we got to do everything in love. And there are going to be moments, my brothers and sisters, if you allow me just to have a casual conversation, that there's sometimes you're just not going to agree with everything. There's going to be moments, my brothers and sisters, that you will not agree with the vision, that you're not going to agree with the plans, that you're not going to agree with the assignment. But my brothers and sisters, you have to understand that you got to learn how to do everything in love because when you do everything in love, God got a reward with your name on it. Because, brothers and sisters, because you'll be willing and you have the reward and the, the diligence to do what God has called for us to do. And so my brothers and sisters, as we enter into this new annual conference year, let me prophesy and speak uh, into this place from pastor to people uh, that we got to love in spite of our differences. Uh, I want you to know, my brothers and sisters, if you can't love your brothers and sisters, how can you love a God uh, who you never see? And my brothers and sisters, when you understand the love of God, uh, and when you trust God at God's word, and when you understand Understand that for God you live and for God that you will die. You can understand that that scripture in the New Testament that declares in John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believed in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That's love my brothers and sisters because in spite of the people who sat on him, in spite of the people who scandalize his name, in spite of the people who text message him for healing the sick and raising the dead, in spite of people throwing rocks at him and throwing stones at him, in spite of the people who carry him up the Villa Della Rosa, in spite of the people who put nails in his hand and nails in his feet and a spear down his side and a crowd of tying them upon his head in spite of it all he still loved us in spite of do I have a witness here and so my brothers and sisters can I tell somebody if you have not heard it today I love you Because sometimes some of us would never experience that most powerful word in your life is the word, I love you. Can I tell you that word would shift your life tremendously? Can I tell you that word will deposit in your heart so much where that whatever you've been going through will have to step aside because love has just replaced what you've been going through. I wish I had a church here. I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, you've got to learn how to use the word to shift your very life. But I also want you to know, uh, my brothers and sisters, that you do have people who don't really mean that either. And you have to be careful what you deposit in your spirit. You have to also be careful in what deposit in your heart because that's why God gave us the spirit of discernment. And that's why God gave us the spirit so that we can seek through some things uh, when we know when you're faking and fronting uh, my brothers and sisters but in spite of it all 
our challenge and our mandate is to love the hell out of everybody. Do I have a witness here? Case in point in our text, what we find in this psalm book of psalm, we understand, my brothers and sisters, I don't need to go in full detail of this particular book, but this particular book we know as the biblical character of David. David was of the sheep tender. We know that David was after God's own heart, but I want you to know, just like you and I and David, David had some problems. David had some issues. David had some dilemmas. Uh, David had some deficiencies. David had some people who scandalized his name. People, uh, some evil attacks that came upon him. Uh, we, we know that David had to fight a lion with his bare hands. We know that David had to go and kill a lion uh, by himself. We know David had to feed big stuff. Uh, uh, with a pile uh, with some smooth stones and a slingshot. David had to endure so many obstacles uh, in his life, but in my brothers and sisters, in his uh, dilemmas, in his circumstances, in his dilemmas, my brothers and sisters, one thing David did not forget was his love uh, for Almighty God. Uh, and I just want to just pause here to give you an assignment and to challenge all what you're going through, my brothers and sisters. Whatever you're facing in your life, whatever dilemmas are in your life, whatever circumstances uh, that you are facing in your life, uh, don't you dare give up on God uh, because God is right there by your side. Uh, you may not see him, but I want you to know he's right there by your side. Uh, and one thing I love about David, uh, if David had to learn uh, how to encourage himself, uh, uh, that's my first point, my brothers and sisters, uh, learn how to encourage yourself. Uh, I know sometimes, brothers and sisters, uh, we want encouragement for everybody else. Uh, we want encouragement for this, uh, and you want recognition for that. Uh, but the old saints, whatever I do for the master, uh, uh, my brothers and sisters, I want him to know uh, what I am doing. Uh, and I just stop by to tell somebody, if you just learn how to encourage yourself, uh, that you are the head and not the tail, uh, that you are the lender and not the borrower, that you are who God has called you to be, uh, and it does not yet appear uh, what God has for you, what is for you, it is just for you. Come on, look at somebody and say, encourage yourself. Uh, when is the last time you looked yourself in the mirror? Uh, when is the last time, my brothers and sisters, uh, you had a self-evaluation of yourself? Uh, when is the last time, my brothers and sisters, uh, you began to talk to your own spirit and said, uh, oh, what do I need to do uh, for this day? What do I need to do uh, in this season of my life? What do I need to do? to get God's attention and let him know the assignment that God has for me. You got to do everything in love. And I believe I'm talking to some people in here who can say I love myself. Uh, where my AK is at? Uh, the one that can say I love myself. Well, where those cappers at? That looks themselves in the mirror and say I love myself. Matter of fact, just hold your hand in your face and say I love you from me. Come on, I say I love you from me. With my blemish self, I love some me. With my dignified self, I love some me. I love some me in spite of what people may see. And yes, my brothers and sisters, let me have a declaimer here. There are going to be some people who are always going to bring up your past. There are going to be some people who are always going to bring up what 
what you used to do. There are going to be some people who always throw up in your face uh, what you have done. But you got to say, I'm past that. God looks beyond my fault and he sees. You got to learn how to encourage yourself. Because of the simple fact that David uh, let us know prophetically in this particular text. Let the morning brings me word of your unveiling love. Because you got to learn how to encourage yourself. You got to just have affirmation for yourself. When you wake up in the morning, put something, some scriptures on your door or on your mirror while you're getting ready to go to work, while you're getting ready to do whatever you do or enjoy your retirement. And you just look at those affirmations and say, I am somebody. I am black girl magic. I am black boy joy. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am who God created me to be. I who God says I am because my brothers and sisters when you start affirming uh, that your love for God uh, your God will begin to affirm uh, some things over your life uh, God will begin to bless you in spite of God will begin to turn some situations around but God began to use you uh, in a mighty special way yeah, don't let nobody devalue who you are. Don't let anybody degrade who you are. And you can just let them know in a nice way that's your opinion. But God loves me. Yes, people talked about me. But say, God loves me. Yeah, I've done what you said you heard. But, but God loves me. And because I serve a God who looks beyond my fault and sees every one of my needs, I don't need anybody validation because I know that God loves me. Also, the text lets us know that the morning brings the word of unfailing love. For I put my trust in you. The second point that I want to leave with you, my brothers and sisters, if you're going to do everything in love, the second thing that you got to learn how to trust in God. Do I have a witness here? I wonder if anybody trusts God. I mean, you really, really trust God with your life. I want you to understand my brothers and sisters like David, after all of his circumstances, after all he's been through, he had to musically, had to find some encouragement amongst himself and say, I trust God in spite of. And my brothers and sisters, you got to have a moment with yourself where you have to just evaluate yourself and see whether or not do you really trust God like you really trust God. I know some people who come to church don't really trust God. Or we only trust God when things are going good. But can I just bust your bubble? When can you trust God when you're going through the valleys? When can you trust God when you're going through the valleys of the shadows of death? When can you trust God when you just been diagnosed with cancer? Can you trust God when you got a bad doctor's report? Can you trust God when your child called you from jail? Can you trust God when you just got a call that your children was in an automobile accident? Can you trust God when somebody come on the campus and try to shoot up the school? Can you trust God when you don't have money in your pocket? Can you trust God when you are asking God for a new home? strong. And so my brothers and sisters just know that it may be your season right now, but God is working some things behind the scenes so that when you come out, you can come out like pure gold. That you can come out with a testimony that God did it again. You can come out with a testimony if it had not been for him on our side. You got a testimony
You must be the son of God. That's love, somebody. But God loves you anyhow. I came to tell somebody they nailed his hand. They nailed his feet. They nailed him, stiffed him in his side. They put a crown of thorns upon his head. I stopped by the tail. Somebody this morning, that's love. But one thing I love, that he didn't stay dead on the old rugged cross on that Friday. Can I be a old preacher for a morning? He died on Friday. They took him off of the cross and buried him in a brand new tomb. He stayed dead, Brother J.W., all day, Saturday morning. He stayed dead, all day, Saturday evening. He stayed dead, all day, Saturday night. That's love. The one thing that I love about love, that he got up with all power in his hand. In the building that know that love woke up this morning. Love started you on your way. Love put food on your table. Love they call on your back. Love allow you to drive the church and say I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go. Of the Lord, is there anybody up in here who can jump on your feet and look at somebody and say, I love you, and there is nothing you can do about it? I will bless his name, I will worship him, I will glorify him, I will serve him until I die. That's all I got. Do everything. And so, my brothers and sisters, 
I'm going to do something a little different here. I want you to keep playing. In the sermon, I share with you that love is action. And love is practical. Let the church say practical.
to do that. Amen. 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 Thank you, God. Amen. Because I want you to know, as a pastor, I know. Amen. But Amen. there are times where some people have to remind you Amen. of some things that needs to be done. Amen. I'm not going to call the name, Amen. but I say thank you. Amen. Amen. Amen.